Hello, Corey, and I own the Painting Broad Studio here in Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. I want to welcome you to our step-by-step uh, -step painting for the Center County Library Summer Reading Program. I'm so excited to be asked to uh, assist with this again this year. This is, uh, I believe, my third time that um, I've been able to lead you in a painting. So today we're going to do the Whimsy Owl painting that you see here. I'm going to walk you through it step by step. You should have a canvas in your kit as well as your brushes and uh, paint as well. So uh, to give you just a quick little background on the painting broad, we're located at 211 North Front Street in the heart of downtown Phillipsburg. And we offer paint your own pottery, as you can see, all without an appointment. Just come on in whenever the studio is open. We offer resin projects also without an appointment. We do canvas painting classes several times a month, birthday parties, wood cutouts, all kinds of fun things. So don't ever think there's nothing to do in Phillipsburg because there certainly is. We're open Wednesdays from 10 to 4, Thursday and Friday from 2 to 9, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. Other appointments uh, beyond those hours as well. So uh, we also like to take the studio on the road. So we do team building events and we do large events um, at hotels, fire halls, all kinds of fun things. So if you have a need for a painting party or a cool project for a group to do, give me a call and we'd be happy to talk with you about those details. Our phone number is 814-287-9001. And you can find us on all the socials at Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Painting Broad. So let's get started with our painting. I'm just going to move the camera real quick. There we go. Okay, so you should have your canvas. You should have some brushes. Um, I have three. I, I believe you're going to have three in your um, in your in your kit. Um, you're going to need a cup of water. I like to have some paper towel available, and then you're going to need your um, paints. You can leave them in the little cups that you um, in the little cups that you get or you can put them out onto a, a uh, paper plate. Either way, it will work just fine. Okay, so I hope you can move it in just a little bit. Okay, excellent. All right, so this is the sample that we're doing. We're gonna change it up just a little bit, um, but I wanted to put this here for you so you have it for reference. And I'm gonna walk you through this painting step by step and we'll just do it together. There may be times where you want to pause and um, catch up. I tend I paint every day, so I tend to paint a little faster than what you probably do. So please feel free to pause the video and uh, catch up with us. So we're going to start with your wide flat brush. Uh, this is the, we're going to do the background with this brush. It's the only step that we'll need this brush for. I want you to give that a dip in your water. Move it up here so you can see a little bit. Okay, give that a dip in your water, and then I want you to uh, gently wipe some of that water off onto your paper towel. That little bit of water that we leave in the brush is going to help the paint spread on the canvas. We're going to start with white. Let's move it just a little bit over so you can see my paint and everything as well. So we've got some white on our brush. We're going to put a circle in this upper right hand corner with the white. I know you won't be able to see it too well, uh, but this is our, our sun or our moon, whichever one you want to call it. And it's probably, I don't know, maybe two or three inches wide. And I believe my canvas is a little bit bigger than yours so that you're able to uh, see what I'm doing. Then without rinsing your brush, you can go ahead and pick up some yellow on your brush and we're gonna go around the outside circle, outside edge of that circle. You can see how it pulls the paint off onto the canvas. We're gonna allow that middle part to be the bright white. Just keep working your way around. You, uh, when the white and the yellow come together, we, that's what we want it to do is to blend so that it's not, so it's not gonna look like a bullseye. So you want to allow that paint to blend with the white underneath it. 
Let's pick up a little more yellow and go a little further out. And I know we're making circles on here, but we don't want this to look like a bullseye. So as you are adding your paint to the canvas, we want to make sure we are blending in where the two rings meet, even though we don't want them to be a bullseye. So, and you're also going to, um, as you come to the edge of your painting, you're gonna go ahead and do that top edge. You'll do the sides with whatever color it is that we've got on our brush at the time. That way it looks finished when it hangs on the wall. Come out a little bit farther with the yellow. So we're just doing long brush strokes. If you find that when you lift your, your brush off the canvas, you get some brush marks. I like to put these, when I'm doing backgrounds like this, I like to do this all in one fell swoop without lifting my brush. You can always go back over it if you do have some of those brush marks, but we're going to add, uh, just continue with a long brush stroke and that will even everything out. Now we don't wanna keep, keep going and keep going or all of our colors will then blend into one, one color and that's not what we want. So um, let's take just a smidge of our, just a smidge of our dark green. See, I just have a little bit on the end of my brush and we're gonna take that just around. And all I've done is gone straight into the canvas with this top part of the brush. Just adding a little definition and interest to that yellow part. And I'm continuing to go over it with my brush just to soften that. So the colors mix so well together when they're on the canvas um, wet. So they tend to really uh, blend together that way. All right, let's do it just a tiny, tiny bit more. Tiny, I might dip that in the white a little bit. So now I've got a little bit of white and a little bit of green on my brush. I'm gonna take that just around this center here. And then I'll go in with, again, with the full flat part of my brush. And I'm going to smooth that around a bit. Now, the cool thing about acrylic paint is that it's very forgiving. If you feel like you've made a mistake, with, you know, as Bob Ross tells us, there are not mistakes. There are only happy accidents. Just allow this to dry, and then you can paint right on top of there. Um, and if you, if you feel like your green is too dark, you can always take some more yellow, go back and right on top of it, even while it's wet. But like I said, we're really, we really would like to keep being able to see those, uh, being able to see those rings around the sun gives it uh, some really neat definition. Okay, so we've got this portion of our canvas, and I, I do believe you have an eight by eight by ten canvas, so you're just uh, doing it on a little bit smaller scale. Um, and if you have an eleven by fourteen, great. So don't forget to come around the sides with that color. All the sides will be covered. And then from here, we're not gonna rinse our brush. We're gonna allow that yellow to stay on our brush and we're gonna pick up uh, a good bit more of that green, okay? And now we're gonna start just inside, just inside the uh, yellow curved brush strokes we have on there already. Go ahead and get that on there, wrap it around the top and the sides. Let's get just a little more, go out a little bit darker here. Okay, that's pretty dark. So I'm gonna take some yellow on my brush and we're gonna soften this just a little bit. And you can see how I've lifted my brush there. 
it leaves a mark on the canvas. So we're going to take, continue with our big, long, free brush strokes and go over that, smooth it out a little bit. And I might take a little yellow here and blend into this line, we're not going for a bullseye. We want these lines to be nice and soft where the colors meet. Nice, long brush strokes the whole way off the canvas. Okay. Now just pick up some more yellow. We're gonna continue on and get that edge of the colors nice and blended in together. Wrap the sides. So I'm very excited to see your finished painting. So uh, the last time I did this, uh, it was such just such a joy to see how well you all did following at home, even though you know we weren't in the same room, you still did such a great job following along. So I'm very, very excited to see um, how these turn out. I make this part here a little bit more rounded. Around the sun. There we go. Pull those, pull that first layer in a little bit closer. All right. So long, nice, long, free brush strokes. Just Blend these in. All right, now let's pick up a little bit of blue. We don't need to rinse our brush. We'll start, ooh, that's really dark. Yeah. So we'll start out here with some longer brush strokes again, the whole way off the canvas. Your rings don't have to end up exactly where mine are. All of these are going to look different, but the same, which I love. So I have a little bit of blue and a little bit of green on my brush now. We're gonna keep going over this edge where they meet. I get just a smidge more green, which then it makes it into a really pretty uh, greenish blue color. And this. For my preference, this is too um, dark right here where the colors meet. So I'm going to take my brush and just right over top of that. And so you see how it blends that in. We just want it to be nice and soft. We don't want it to look like stripes or the bullseye that we talked about. Might need to there, pop that up just a little bit so that I can. Get this bottom part. Don't forget all your edges. You have to lift your canvas up and get that bottom edge. Now we're just going with a little bit more yellow. Just brighten this a little bit. See those? See these brush strokes? So we want to um, once you get your paint on there. Sometimes it's inevitable, but. Once you get your paint on there, you're going to do this long, long brush strokes the whole way off the canvas. Okay, can we get this to be round, a little more round up there? Okay. All right, so now this rest of this part, we're going to just go ahead and pick up our dark blue without rinsing our brush, and we're gonna finish this all out with dark blue. All right. We should try to do one of these live where we can chat back and forth and you can ask questions if you have them. 
Oh, those brush strokes are really showing up in the blue. See what I mean? So we'll go ahead and pull away those nice curved brush strokes from one side of the canvas to the other without lifting your brush up. Okay, so maybe we want to take a little bit of, maybe we want to take a little green down through there. Ooh, oops, I accidentally picked up some purple. Well, there you go. No mistakes, just happy accidents. We'll just continue that off, add a little more. But there you go, that purple really makes that deep in there. I said we were going to do this one a little differently. Now we've got purple in there. And these, uh, this background, most of this will be covered up. You won't be able to see a whole lot of it because it's the tree and the owl are going to be our um, our main focus. Okay. I like it. I think that looks great. Uh, so we are probably finished with this brush. You can put that in your water. And now if you'd like, you can pause the video and wait for it to dry. Um, in the interest of time, we're gonna go ahead and dry it with a hair dryer. <laughs> little, little itty bitty thing. I don't even know where I got it. So you'll have to excuse the, uh, excuse the noise for just a second. Oh, I got a spot there. You can always rinse your brush out and come back in with a clean, damp, uh, clean, damp brush. And it does the same thing that they were done before. You don't have to add any more paint. I had a little spot there with our brush. So I'm going to take it over this edge here. All right. Now we're going to dry this. You'll know it's dry when there aren't any more shiny parts. Um, so you can let it dry. Pause the video, let it dry and come back. So it should just take a few minutes or you can use a hair dryer, move that process along. So please excuse the noise. I'm just gonna go ahead and dry it real quick. Look at that. This is one of those little itty bitty travel, <laughs> travel hair dryers. Okay, so in your brushes, you sh should have uh, what's called a round brush, and that's this one. Uh, it The tip is uh, not flat like our other one. Um, so this is also called a medium brush, and uh, the top of it is rounded a little bit. We like to use that tip to sketch on where um, our tree is going to go. And the other thing is that the harder you press with this brush, the thicker the line will be. And conversely, the if you have a lighter touch, it's going to be even thinner lines, maybe for some of these in here. We'll also go back in with our detail brush and we'll add some of those too. But take this, go ahead and give that just a swirl in your water. I like to brush it uh, off my paper towel, just kind of um, flat like that against the table. And then it keeps my point intact. You never do this with a brush. You never um, bang it bristles down on the table. Uh, that tends to ruin it. So let's start with some dark brown. We're gonna put the tree on. Don't want you to be stressed out. So let's take a deep breath. <gasps> oh, okay, it's all gonna be fine. The brush, um, the tree, is all gonna start from this lower corner, okay? Now, this is turned around. So I'm not going to say left or right because the video is inverted. So um, we're going to take it up into uh, underneath. Well, first, we'll go underneath the moon or the sun here. Um, 
because we want our owl to be placed here on the lighter section of our background. So you want the only one, the only branch you really, really need to decide where it's going to land is this one because we need it to land somewhere here so that you have enough room to put your owl on there. Um, all, of, all of the branches start from this bottom corner. It's one of the tricks of uh, trees. We're all gonna start from this corner. We're gonna start here, we're gonna go up and up. And then there's a lot of lots and lots of V's. I'll show you when we get there, but let's start in this bottom corner and let's put that first, that, that first branch on that just comes the whole way out. We're just gonna go ahead and take it right off the side of the canvas. So we'll start at the bottom here and I'm gonna, and get my owl a little off center from the moon. Maybe I'll even put a little dot there. And that's how I know when I come up from here that I that's where I need it to hit when I'm going off the side of the canvas. So let's go ahead and do that. So the bottom corner. And branches aren't straight in nature. So you're not really making a straight line. You are taking the tip of that brush and you're taking it all the way off the side of the canvas and it's not straight. We don't even we don't need the sides to be straight. We don't need the branch to be straight. I'm going to make one more pass at that to make it a little bit thicker. As we can whoops, I dumped it in the white. Um, as we come back over to the, uh, you know, the main trunk of the tree, this will naturally start to get a little bit thicker here. So uh, we'll probably go back and add some more to that. But let's add some other bigger trunks. Let's take uh, maybe one up this way for some bigger branches, I mean. And we're going to go a little more whimsy with these. You want to go ahead and take them all the way up. So you're just using the tip of that brush. And then when I get to the end, I kind of flick and you get that the pointed end. If you want to try it on like your paper plate or um, or your paper towel while you're doing that, you certainly can. So I'm still starting at the bottom. I come up here, I'm gonna branch out this way. Um, start at the bottom, come up, and you're just making what look like V's. Look at all these V's. And you can put on as, as many or as few of these branches as you like. Now I'm pressing a little bit harder on um, my main limbs here. And that makes my brush stroke a little bit wider. So I'm using the tip, 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 tip. And then I'm gonna press it's a little bit harder as it comes closer to the joint here. And because that's how they naturally do uh, end up in nature. So just gonna go ahead and allow that to happen as it comes closer to the trunk. Now, if you are, if you're struggling at all with uh, keeping them on the, and you want them on the thinner side, then you can go ahead and switch to that detail brush and that will help you. Just adding, like I said, the harder you press, the thicker the line will be. You're just using that tip then it should be pretty thin. As we come down here into this bottom trunk, I'm gonna just let it naturally flare out a bit at the bottom of the canvas. So it'd be nice and thick at that bottom corner. So over here, we've got where our owl is gonna sit. I don't want these to come over too much further. So we'll let, mine's gonna sit here. Let's add a couple more limbs to this part big branch that we brought over. Then we got another V. It's gonna come in on the branch. We're gonna bend it down. 
Maybe there's another one here. Maybe we had some go off the side. There are a lot more on the sample. So like I said, this is totally up to you and your artistic license, how many of these branches you would like to put on. Just going over those a little bit. Um, I think that's it for me as far as as far as branches. You can um, most certainly put on as many as you'd like. Let's take without rinsing our brush. Let's do just a um, little tap of yellow, and let's take that up through some of these branches. Oh, that looks nice. So just a little bit. You can even tap it onto your paper towel or onto your plate like I'm doing. Take a little bit up through here. So with that brown on your brush already, it'll mix with that little bit of yellow. Just put some neat highlights through there of the on the branches. Gives it a little bit more interest looks more like you know actual wood now if you want to um if you need to touch up any of their branches you can go in with your tiny detail brush and fill them in if you'd like There's a couple really small um, branches that you can, um, here, we'll put one here, just with that tiny detail brush. It has the same uh, technique though, that the harder you press, the thicker the line will be. So if you want really, really skinny ones, really, really skinny lines and, branches, then you have to use super light touch of this one as well. I know it doesn't look like it in the video, but I'm, I'm left-handed and I tend to take my pinky and rest it um, on the canvas when I'm working with an easel. It helps me keep my hand steady. That looks good. Put it over here. Okay. Trying to decide if we need something in here or not. I kind of like it open like that. You can also take a little bit of yellow too. And at this point, and with the detail brush, you can go up through there, add a little bit of highlight to some of those tinier spots. So I love how the yellow um, blends in with the brown. I don't know. We almost need to add something there because it branch probably wouldn't be quite that long. All right, let's add one small branch. All right, I'm gonna use some brown. I'm in here. Ooh. Real nice and easy brush strokes through there. Okay, 
That's good. I like that. And a little one. See how tiny you can get that with the little bitty brush. Lots of bees. B, 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 lots of bees. Okay, I like that a lot. That looks good. Yellow down through there. Okay. So now that we've done um, we've done our tree, we're going to let that dry, and we're going to go ahead and move on to our to our owl over here. Uh, I know it's hard to see in the sample, but the owl is purple. You can use a combination of whatever colors you would like to use. Um, I'm going to lighten my purple just a little bit because I think it's almost like the brown. So I've got um, my purple here. And with my um, wet brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And we're just going to make a small puddle here of like a lilac color. Not super, super light, but lighter than the purple that I've got here. If you want to use that straight purple, you go right ahead. This is your painting. This is absolutely your painting. So the cool thing is I just show you kind of where things go and how I use my brush and stuff. And you can absolutely Paint it however you wish. So our owl is going to, my owl, I'm just going to show you where I'm going to put him. He's going to hit, he's going to hit this, that sun a little bit. Doesn't quite touch the branch, okay? And it's really kind of an egg shape. I'm going to start small, smaller than what I expect because the, there. So the cool thing about acrylic paint is that then you really want to start smaller than what you need. Because if you go too big, then you kind of have to wait for it to dry and cover it all back up. But if I start smaller, now I can come back in with my brush and continue pressing along that outside edge to make it a little bigger as I go. So you're using your medium brush still, the same brush we used for the tree. And with the colors you have, I mean, if you want him to be brown, you can, mix some brown and yellow together or make him brown. You can mix some white and blue. You can make a lighter green. There's lots of options. Okay, just pressing my brush along that outside edge to make him a little bit bigger. So, okay, I think that works for me for size. Maybe it needs to be a little bit better. Just these edges out. This edge press out. So not the whole thing, just taking those sides, pressing the paint out a little bit further, just on the sides to make him a little more round. Okay. All right, that works. Okay, excellent. Let's um get and dry this just real quick. From what I can see, my most of my brown is already dry. But when we put on uh, some of these fun leaves and flowers and stuff like that, we want that uh, the brown to be totally dry. So go ahead and let's dry our owl and the tree and we'll come back at it. Or you can just pause the video and wait for it to dry.
And like I said, once the shiny parts are gone, that means it's dry. And let me plug our art camp real quick. We have an art camp every summer. This one is in August, um, August 7 through 11, uh, ages 6 to 16. So uh, fun, fun, fun week. Uh, we meet in the morning, 10 to 1230. Uh, and then they have an art show on Friday. When you pick the kids up, you get to see all their projects. But it's a super fun week. So if you've got um, a kid who loves art or even just wants to experience something new, visit us on Facebook and you'll see the link there to register. Okay, so let's do let's do some little flowers. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. These all have like four, um, four or five petals on them, and they're just done with this little detail brush. I think I'm going to bring it a little closer. Are you going to see? And I'll show you a couple of things you can do. Okay, so. Using the tip of your brush, you're just going to press, press, press. Oh, I'm getting a bunch of petals. But that's all you do for that type of flower. Okay. And the other way you can do it is take the, your brush, the end of it, dip it, the part that doesn't have bristles, dip it down in the white. And you can then go dot, 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 dot. Then you're gonna make little flowers that way. I think actually I'm gonna stick with the little dots because they're so cute. Um, each time you dot, once you load it up, then each time you dot, each little dot gets smaller, which it's really cool. And they look like little blossoms on the tree. So that's what we're gonna do next. You're gonna put your, um, Get your flowers on there, however many as you'd like. Um, like I said, this is your this is your painting, but I think I'm going to stick for this particular sample. I'm going to stick with this, so I'm going to have to cover that up at some point. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to I'm going to dot around, or you can, you know, make the petals like that. Another shape of petals is um, almost like leaves like a little teardrop, you can do that too. So that's another way to do it. Those are cute. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my brush around. I'm gonna use the back end of my brush. I'm gonna go in, just put some dots kind of in a little cluster three, four, five of them. If you're, um, this particular white tends to be, oh, well, I don't know what kind of white the library will get for you, but the white that I have tends to be pretty thick. So sometimes I have to put a drop of water in it, help it uh, stretch a little bit. Okay, so these are, some of these are on the branch. Some of them sit above the branch. So I'm sitting below the branch. You just want to vary, you know, where you put them. There, I got six on that one. Um, it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It doesn't matter if you have three. It doesn't matter if you have four, five, six petals, whatever you want to do. We're just kind of adding these on here. On the sample, I also have this kind of um, petal. I'm gonna bring it up and show you. That are kind of um, interspersed throughout. There we go, all right. Um, and it's kind of like this, like a teardrop. And you can put some of those wherever you'd like. Okay. A couple of those uh, 
teardrop shaped petals around. And you can put on as many or as few of these as you'd like. White really pops on this background, which is very cool. All the way over to this side. If you want to put a center dot um, with color, you can do that. Maybe a lighter blue or a lighter purple. Um, put that in the center if you like. So you'll be able to. Uh, I'm going to move on here in just a second. So. You're going to um, want to pause until you have your flowers on or your blossoms. Before we move on to the next step. So just kind of getting as many of these on here as you'd like. Those bigger white petals. Oh, let's put the sample back up here. And then on the sample, I do have a few down here in the bottom corner. Put those on quickly. This is one of the very, very first paintings that we did when the business opened eight years ago. So it's fun to do it again and to add a few extra things to it. Okay. I think in the interest of time, I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to stop there with the petals. Um, I'm going to take some green. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the side and a little bit of white. I'm going to make a lighter green. You see that? Okay, I'm going to mix that together. Maybe we'll do a little smidge of yellow. Okay. I'm just making a significantly lighter green. And what we're going to do with the green is we're going to uh, green, maybe little stems to these flowers. And we're just uh, going to add those in. They're like curly cues, or maybe they're just a line. Just with the tip of that brush. They're very whimsical, just tiny swirls and curly cues coming out from some of our blossoms. Just kind of making a swirly with that. It doesn't need to be super bright, especially these ones that are on top of the brown. They're really gonna pop off of there. Few over here.
if your brush starts to, um, you know, split a little bit, just take it on your paper towel, press it down a little bit, very gently. That tip will come back together. Add some more. All right, I am going to show you how I'm going to take care of this right here that I don't want to leave there. I'm just mixing a little bit of green and yellow to mash that a little bit. Um, see how close we can get. Pretty close. So I'm going to just take that through there. I'm going to pull it up into the background a little bit. So just a rinse. Come back in with some dark brown right on the top of there. All right, now I'm going to put some of my dots right over top of that area. Using my clean, um, dry, well, not dry, it's kind of damp, my clean, damp, round brush to sort of smooth that out a little bit. Make sure my brown is covered up there. Okay. All right, let's move on to our, uh, the rest of our uh, owl. Um, the sample has uh, pink. I'm going to, make my purple a little bit lighter and I'm going to make this part of his face light purple, like um, lilac. So I need a little bit of purple and I'm going to just lighten up what I already used for his body. So we're just keeping it a few shades lighter. Okay, and then we're going to Following the natural curve of his head, oh, we need to go a little lighter so we can see it, right? You're gonna do what it kind of feels like an upside down art in a way. Goes off the top of his head just a little bit. Doesn't sit exactly on his head. I'm just going to pour some white and mix it right on the canvas. Okay, and I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue and a little bit of purple. I still have some white on my brush and that's gonna be his wing color. And those look like kind of upside down teardrops and they sit off the side of his body just a little bit. Points come off the side just a little bit. Making him a little smaller than what I normally would, just so, like I said, with his body, that I can then go in 
with my brush and press those edges out just a smidge to get it the size that I want. Fill those in. I'm noticing my wings are different sizes, so I'm going to think about how to fix that. And you're usually always going to have to take the smaller one to match the bigger one. So just getting this point on his wing there. And then I'm going to come over to this one. And I'm going to go ahead and press those sides out just a little bit. Okay. You can take a tiny bit of white and kind of, without rinsing your brush, you take a little bit of white and kind of streak that down through there. We're going to turn our brush around and we're going to use the end that doesn't have any bristles again. And we're going to put some dots through his belly. Wipe that off. And let's see. Let's take a little bit. I'm going to match his body. The body color is what is going to, we're going to use for his ears. So I'm going to take some purple. Little itty bitty ears up there. You're going to fill those in. Cute. All right. So now we're going to do his eyes. You want to keep moving with that. I don't think I need to rinse that brush off. We're going to use some black now. Rinse your detail brush off. And we're going to get in with some black. And we're going to do some little feet, just like that, underneath his belly, touching the branch, just like that. And then we're going to put two circles for his eyes in this lighter part of his face. So Fill those in. But feel free to pause the video if you need to um, catch up. Everybody works at a different pace, and there's no, there's no right or wrong. Had to fight with these eyes a little bit to try and get them about the same size. Okay. Brush a rinse. We're going to take some of our dark brown 
I'm going to put a little chart. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to have to wait. We need to put light around those eyes. So you can stop and, and dry it if you'd like at, at this point. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of the purple, the same color as the body, and put that up through here on his forehead. Like that. And then we're going to take some white, just with that tiny detail brush. I'm going to put a little, a little border around these eyes. I have to go back in with a little bit of black to kind of clean out the center a little. I can't wait to see what your paintings look like. I hope that you will email your finished products to the library. Maybe they will even ask you to do that, give you tell you where to send those, but I can't wait to see them. Okay, so now you're gonna take the last step, I believe is we're gonna do more dots in the inside of his eye. We're gonna do a big one. I need to make sure I have to do this right because I don't wanna to have to do it two times. You're gonna do a bigger one and then come down and do a smaller one. Same on the other side. All right, and now we're going to take our dark brown and we're going to put a tiny triangle that kind of meets, joins the eyes together, joins the face together, down into the body. So that like the piece de resistance really makes it look like an owl when you get this on there, this brown beak. I'm going to go around my eyes again, but you can let it dry and do that and go around the eyes. And I think I will do that once this is dry. But in the interest of time, um, I'm just going to write over top. Oops. Okay, there he is, Whimsy Owl. I am so thankful that you joined us today. I am um, thank you to the library and the Friends of Holt Memorial Library, Center County Library System. Thank you all so much for asking me to help with this painting. Um, the very, very last step of any painting is to sign it. So go ahead and take your, your tiny brush um, and just with the tip of it, you can put your initials down in the corner. And that means you're finished and a real artist. So I'm proud of you. I, I can't wait to see what these look like. Thank you so, so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you in the studio. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>